boom. All right, so today we're going to go over um, 1.6 um, Desmos, um, just the actual lesson for it. Um, a bunch of you have um, answered this already, and I just want to make sure that you guys are all good on this. Okay, so it says the super discount store is having a sale and all clearance items are 40% off. Which of the following are correct ways to find the price of an item that is normally $25. So you're reaching back into your brain of percentages. Um, I want to say this is back in seventh grade um, when you had to learn percentages. And so it says, the um, one of them says multiply $25 by 40. One of them says multiply $25 by 0.4. One of them says multiply by 25 by 0.4 and then subtract that amount from 25. And the last one says multiply by um, multiply 25 by 0.6 and then so on and so forth. Okay, so um, a lot of you already told me the answer because you're telling me here, but I'm gonna show you that a bunch of you showed me some answers here. Someone said B, someone said nothing, someone said C, uh, B, is this A, B, B. Someone said C, someone said C, someone said C, someone said C, someone said B, someone said C. Oh, so it looks like the answer has to be between B and C. Okay, and uh, hmm, which one is it? So for those of you who don't have an answer, yep, I'm talking to all of you people who have nothing there yet, um, put something down, okay? And so the correct answer for this is actually, let's see, which of the following are correct ways? Ways, ways. So there's actually two that they were looking for. There's actually two. Um, I will tell you right now, um, if you don't remember how to find percentages, so let, let's just do the math on this really quick. So the super discount store is having a sale on all clearance items that are 40% off. Okay, 40% off of a whole thing. So the following are ways to find the price of the item that is normally $25. So they wanna find the sale price. What's the sale price? So there's actually two answers to this and I wanna show you, kind of both ways um, to do this. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a picture because pictures help me understand everything. So if you think about, um, and you know, your teacher may have drawn, um, sorry, my iPad's going cuckoo right now. Um, your, your teacher might have drawn like tape diagrams. I'm gonna use a tape diagram here. So I have a tape diagram that looks like this. And what a tape diagram is, is it's a piece of tape that we're using as a whole. And we're gonna cut this piece of tape up to figure out what, what, is the, what is the right amount that we should be using. Okay, so here we have this piece of tape and it says, the store is having a sale and all clearance items are 40% off. So 40% off is less than half. So I'm gonna go like here-ish and I'm gonna say that this is 40% off. Okay, so if it's 40% off, what is this part here? What is this part? So yeah, I need you to answer in the chats. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Very strong work there. It's the 60%. Very good, very good, very good. It is the 60%. Very strong work there. Now look, what is 60% off? Well, not 60% off. What does the 60% represent? What does the 60% represent? What does the 60% represent? Yeah, it's the sales price. So this, this part here is the sales price. Very good. So if that's the sales price, what the heck does the 40% mean? What does the 40% mean? What does the 40% mean in this context? So for those of you not answering, take the risk. Yeah, exactly. This is my discount. This is the dollars off. Um, these are all the things that they're counting. Very good. Very good. Sorry, I'm trying to collect attendance for you guys. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so very, very good. Um, good. Okay, so do I care about the 40%? 
Not really. I really don't care about the discount. I really care about the sales price. Why, Ms. Johnson? Because that's what they asked me to do. Which of the following are ways to find the price of an item? That's normally 25. So let me be truthful. Do I care about the discount? Yes, I do. But the, what they're asking me is not the 40%. What I'm asking me, what, what I'm asking is the sales price, right? Yeah, and it can help you. Very good, very good. Okay, so, so then I look at all of these. And then so which, can you tell me which one of these is definitely not the answer? Which one of these is definitely not the answer? Very good, that is not the answer. Someone put A, a bunch of people actually put A. A is not the answer. There's no way, there's no way, there's no way that this is the answer. Now, why couldn't this be the answer? Why couldn't this be the answer? Yeah, because if you multiply by 40, like let's actually do that math, okay? Like let's pretend that you said that A was the answer. I know none of you put A as the answer, but I don't know why this is gigantic, but let's just calm you down there. Um, let's pretend that you actually are multiplying this out. So you're like, oh yes, let me just multiply this out here. So you say 25 times 40. Okay, is this, tell me about this number. It's gigantic. It's a thousand. Are you, like, what does that mean? Does the thousand mean that's my discount? Is a thousand mean that I'm going to get that thousand dollars if I buy this? Is it a shirt? Whatever. I'm buying a shirt. Boom. I bought a shirt. I get a thousand dollars if I buy it. Yeah, I'm not paying for no thousand dollar shirt. Come on now. So that one doesn't make sense. So when you're taking a quiz or a test or someone's asking you something and they give you a bunch of options, Sometimes you guys get stuck on, I need to find the answer. I need to find the answer. Okay, I hear you. Don't focus on finding the answer. Also focus on which one of these is not true, right? Yeah, there's no way this makes sense. Very, very good. Okay, so that one's gone. So then it says multiply 25 by 0.4. What's that? 25 times 0.4. What's that mean? Right? What does that mean? loud you're loud what does that mean what does this 10 represent yeah it is the discount so here over here i need to say this over here is 25 dollars um wait actually sorry let me draw it differently this is the whole thing is worth 25 dollars. what you just found was the 10 dollar discount so if $10 is the discount, very good. If $10 is the discount, right? Is, the, is this a legit way to find the price of the item? Am I paying $10? Am I paying $10? Am I paying $10? No, I'm not paying $10. That'd be really cool. Right, exactly. So yes, 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 yes. Very good. Someone said, hey, by the way, you're paying $15, but $10 is the discount. You're paying, wait, 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 wait. Where did she get this $15 business? Looking at our picture here, and let me move this guy down. Looking at our picture here, where is the $15? Yeah, just put it on the um, OneNote. Just put it on the OneNote and I'll, and I'll get to it after. For those of you who are asking for questions, absolutely just put it in the OneNote. Yes, okay, so someone says, Ms. Johnson, the way you get $15 is you subtract it from your 25. Very good, very good, very good. So here, this guy right here becomes my $15, which is my sales price. Okay, so boom, I found my answer down here, number two. Um, I write my math out. By the way, um, if I ever give you, um, Sometimes I write back on your homework and I say, answers are the least interesting part of your work. I actually need to see your work. This would be considered your work right here. You copying down a bunch of answers is like easy. So I would put something like this, 25, oops, 25 times 
equals $10. And then I said 25 minus 10 equals $15. So this is my answer for that one. Does that make sense? So this is not the answer though. So whoever put B is not the answer. Whoever put B is not the answer. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense because all you found was the $10. So this equals to point, I mean, sorry, this equals to $10. So no, this is not the price of the item. This is the amount of the discount, right? So whoever put B, go back and switch your answers. No harm, no foul. Just make sure that you understand why you got it wrong and now how to choose it right. Very good. Very good. I know, me too. Ash, sorry, I was going to say your name. I know, I really like this too. Um, when you guys share your work, share your thinking, because come on, no one wants to listen to me the whole time. Say my name. <laughs> so funny. Ashley, thank you, Ashley. You're going to be famous off my two views. Woot, woot. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to move on to C, because hopefully C is going to be the answer, because a lot of you people put C. It says multiply 25 by 0. 0.4. <gasps> that's what I did right here. And then subtract the amount from 25. Oh, that's what Jonky told me to do right here. Oh, right? This is it. This is the answer. So some of you are like, see, Ms. Jonathan, I told you the answer was C. Yeah, but read the directions really carefully. Everyone together out loud with me. Just kidding. Um, it says, which of the following are correct ways? to find the price of an item. So this is not a multiple choice. This is um, several different ways they say this, this would be a checkbox, right? You can choose as many as you want. Um, this would also be a multiple select response. So Ms. Johnson, if it's not A and it's not B, we know it's C, are you saying that it could also be D? I don't know, let's see. Multiply 26, 25 by 0.6. Okay, I'm just gonna try that. So 25 times 0. 0.6 is, oh, that was my answer. What is this? Where's this 0. 0.6 coming from? Someone help me under, what, what is it? What are they talking about here? Where did we get this answer? So it is an answer, right? Where did this 0. 0.6 business come from? So you're looking for clues for 0. 0.6. Here's my little picture. <laughs> Math. We got it from math. Um, we got the 25 from the price. Yes, ma'am. Uh, but the 0.6, look all throughout this problem, anywhere on my screen. In Spanish, donde esta 0.6? 0. 0.6. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so a couple of people got it. Yes, ma'am. It's the 60%. 60%, Miss Johnson, when you write it in math, is 0. 0.6. Muy bien for that answer. Someone else said it's from the sales price, kind of. Um, um, someone else said it's 60%. Very good. Someone else said 60%. Very good. Um, very good. It's it's the um, just like 0. 0.4. Someone else earlier said 0. 0.4, Miss Johnson, is 40%. Right? So 60% is your 0.6. Oh gosh, we don't want that to happen. Trust me. Very good. Okay. So for those of you who didn't know, 60% um, came from my 40% because the whole thing is 100%. Therefore, this is 60%, right? So 60% written as a decimal is 0.6. I will write that as a little like thought bubble because in case you've forgotten, right? This little guy over here says, 60% as a decimal is 0.6, right? It's 0.6. I'm going to scooch you over. Scoochie. Um, so another way that you can think about this too, which is very interesting to me here, is you guys told me, hey, Ms. Johnson, first multiply, then subtract. Yeah, right? Over here, this way here, I don't know if you know this, but you subtracted and then you multiplied. So that's that's pretty much the way percentages go. Um, I specifically remember 
um, being in the store one time. And my dad used to do this to me when I was younger. He'd be like, okay, if this is, you know, 40% off, how much would the sale price be? And in my head, I would be doing this math here. I'd be doing this kind of math here, right? I go 25 times 0.4 and then I'd subtract from 25. And I tell my dad the answer and he's like, yeah, that's right. How'd you get it? And I tell him, and then he'd be like, wouldn't it be easier for you to just multiply it by 0.6? And I'd be like, ah! And I wanted to be like, no. And he was so much writer than me, right? I don't know if that makes more sense. But for me, um, because when you calculate things in your head, your head can only hold on to so many numbers at a time. This way makes a little bit more sense. So for those of you who only chose C, hopefully now you see why D is also the answer, right? And then part two is um, if you chose B, you're kind of there. You just have to finish off your work there, okay? Very strong work. So, um, Ms. Johnson, will you give us questions like this on a test? Absolutely. And does it, um, so can you like think about this really quickly? Um, if you read these directions on my son, I'm just going to tell you right now, my son is um, known for not reading directions. It'll say something like, um, write a question that this, you know, equation can answer and he'll solve the equation. He will not write the a question. So do you see how technically he's wrong, right? So here is the same thing. It says, which of the following ways are correct, uh, following are correct ways to find the answer. And Ms. Johnson, Ms. Johnson, Ms. Johnson, if, if I just chose C, would you still give me points? Absolutely. Would you get all the points? Probably not, right? All right, moving on. So today, Today, you should understand the characteristics that make sequences decrease. Decrease means go down, right? Compare decreasing arithmetic and geometric sequences. Arithmetic, remember, it just means y equals mx plus b land. And geometric means we're, we're using the exponent because remember, I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish there was a faster way to write times two, times two, times two, okay? Questions you should be able to answer today are what makes an arithmetic sequence decrease? How can a geometric sequence be decreasing. Yes, thank you so much for that. And then how are equations of decreasing sequences different than increasing sequences? So there's a lot of um, adjectives here that I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page for. So over here, I'm going to write you um, some quick little notes. Please hold. Um, some quick little notes. Um, so let's see, let me scooch you over. Um, geometric. So geometric means something like a times b to the x. And then arithmetic is the one that you really like. That looks like there's so many letters in there. Hold on a second. Let's see where you said arithmetic. Okay. This is y equals mx plus b basically. Let's see. Increasing means going up. Decreasing means going down. Increasing means going up. So just a couple of notes there, just so that you have these in your head. Um, it's really, really powerful. It's really, no, no problem. Um, it's really, really powerful when you guys know the words. Because if I say, hey, this is an arithmetic sequence, I basically told you to go look for M and go look for B right? If I tell you it's a geometric thing, that means you're, you're multiplying. So knowing the words is super important. As a teacher, I used to think, ah, oh, it's not that important if they don't know the words, but language is so huge, right? Language is so huge. Okay. Okay. So let's continue on moving right along. Okay. So prairie dogs, I didn't know that was a thing. I thought a prairie dog was a dog that lived on the prairie. Apparently not y'all. It's not, it's not, it's not true. All right. So prairie dogs are small mammals that are members of the squirrel family. Look, he looks like a little chubby squirrel. Don't worry. He has no feelings on that. So it's good. Okay. The average, they average about 14 to 17 inches in size and live in underground colonies called prairie dog towns. They are native to the Great Plains region of the United States. Okay. That makes sense why they're called prairie, right? Because that's what a plain is. It's a prairie. But yes, absolutely. Um, but I don't understand why they're called dogs because they don't look like dogs. That bugs me. Okay. The prairie dog population is estimated to have declined. Remember we talked about decreasing by 95% over the past 200 years. So prairie dog reserves have been established in some areas. Prairie dog reserves are places where the prairie dogs can live 
in their natural habitat without being disturbed by hunting or human activities. So this is your, like, your like this is the context. And then they go here. One such prairie dog reserve was established on 120 acres of land in 2015. As the surrounding land has become more valuable for humans, the size of the reserve has been reduced over time. The following data has been collected over, um, has been collected about the size of the reserve. So this is what it looks like, right? Here's some information. Okay, so it says write an explicit equation, which we know how to do, and a recursive equation, which we know how to do for the reserve over time. And what type of sequence does this data represent? Okay, so here, I'm just gonna jump over here because then it's just easier for me to write. Okay, um, so here's that information, right? So the first thing that I wanna tackle is, are you a geometric or are you arithmetic? There's other types of sequences out there. Don't think that those are the only two. There's a lot of different ones, right? So here, there, this is only two types. If it's geometric, it's for the growth, it's gonna be time something, time something, time something. If it's arithmetic, then it's plus something, plus something, plus something. So go ahead and look at this really quick. Can you take a guess? Can you take a guess? Is this plus something, time something? Which one? Don't worry. Well, we will talk about that. Very, very good. Very good. Okay. So some people are already telling me what they what what they already know about this. So the way I'm going to do this, very good. I'm going to start subtracting. So someone says, "Hey, Miss Johnson, just start subtracting." And if you're wrong, then maybe it is multiplication. So here's my handy dandy calculator. So I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to subtract bottom from top. What? I'm going to take bottom 112.5. So 112.5 and I'm just going to subtract 120. Boom. And I get negative 7.5. So I'm going to write that down here and I'm going to say, hey, minus 7.5. Okay. Now, Ms. Johnson, I thought you said adding. Well, technically I'm adding a negative right? I'm adding a negative. Very good. So when I add a negative, it's still adding. So don't, don't um, be inflexible about that. When I say adding something, it could also be a negative. Okay. If this is really arithmetic, then I should be able to pull this guy and it'll be the same. It'll be the same. It'll be the same. Say what, Ms. Johnson? Do it again to make sure that that number is a constant. Okay. So go 105. Uh-huh. And then subtract it from 112.5. Yes. Oh, Miss Johnson, it's the same number. This is like the star of the show thing, right? Um, yes. Yes, it is. But I am actually going to check again and again because I really want to confirm um, my thought that it is correct. So 97.5 minus 105. Boom. 90 minus 97.5. I know I don't have to do that, but I, I'm just going to do it. So because this guy is minus 7.5 the whole way down, we know that this means here this is arithmetic this means this means arithmetic okay arithmetic means let me move this out of my way what it means is i'm going up or down by a constant i'm adding something to get to the next term okay okay so it is arithmetic so it says what type of sequence does this data represent it's arithmetic ta-da right Yay. For those of you who said you don't like geometric, for, that's okay. For right now, you're not doing a geometric, so we're okay. So um, the second part says, uh, or actually the first part, write an explicit equation and a recursive equation to model the size over, over time. So the first thing that I want to do is because I'm in arithmetic land, oh yeah, y equals mx plus b. Okay, so over here, I'm going to be writing y equals mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b. This is for explicit. So I'm going to do explicit over here. I'm going to do recursive over here. So y equals mx plus b. Does anybody see my m? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hun. Does anybody see my m? Does anybody see my b? If I had my m and my b, then I'm done with explicit. If I have my m and my b, then I'm done with explicit. Very good. So a couple people have already found my M, which in this case is this guy here. It's the star of the show, right? So this guy here is my M. M equals negative 7.5. 
m equals negative 7.5 inch constant? Yeah, because that's how much it's going down by. So again, slope is your number. It's your constant um, difference. It's your rate of change. It's your slope. So Ms. Johnson, you want me to put negative 7.5 in M spot? Yes, someone put in the chat MX. It's not, it's just M. Okay, so I put it in the M spot. Pretend if I just write it directly down. Okay, good. And then according to this, all I have to look for is my B. What does B stand for again? Anybody remember what B stands for? Notice I've said this a bunch of times, so I wanna make sure that I say it again and again. Yeah, it's my y-intercept, it's my starting point, however you wanna call it. Very good, strong work there, gentlemen. Um, so this is my starting point. It's my y-intercepts, also known as x is equal to zero, okay? So dang, x is equal to zero, it's not there. So if you've been paying attention to me, I'm always gonna to refer to this one person who told us how to do this. So can you guys find out what number would go here if I was to go backwards? What number would go here if I went backwards? I'm gonna pause the video really quick. So yeah, a, a bunch of people already gave me what number is right here. So if I go this way to find my numbers, I could also go backwards to find my, my numbers as well. So if I'm at 120, so something, there's a number right here. I subtracted 7.5 and I got 120, right? To get to 112.5, I went this way, 120 minus 7.5 equals 112.5. So the equation that's going on in my head right now looks like this, right? What minus 7.5 gave me 120, right? What minus 7.5 gave me my 120. So if you do the math on that, I could just, you know, solve 120 plus 7.5 gave me 127.5, which is what a bunch of you wrote in the chat. Awesome work. So you want me to put that there for um, your B? Yeah, just put it right there. Perfect. Got it? So then putting the equation together, just drop your y and your x in there, and then you're pretty much done. So let me do that. y equals negative 7.5x plus 127.5. So I want to take some time right now to talk about the, um, the context of this really quick. So the context of this problem, going back to the reserve, right? So they started off with 120 acres of land, right? 120 acres of land. Year one, 120 acres of land. What would this negative 7.5 mean in the context of our problem? What would this negative 7.5 mean back here in the context of our problem? Yes, very good. Can you put that in the public chat? So your um, slope is always going to be rise over run. So that's how many acres they lost per year, right? So year one, they have 120. And then boom, they lost 7.5 acres. Then boom, they lost another 7.5 acres, right? All the way down. So can you imagine the graph of this thing, right? The graph of this thing is like sloped downward like this, right? So um, that's the explicit equation. Let's work on a recursive, okay? Recursive, Ms. Johnson, rec recursive. So if you can say this in regular terms, then you can say it in recursive. So how, what's happening in this pattern? What is happening in each pattern? So if you look at Noah's response in the chat, this is exactly what's happening, right? So you can say next, equals previous minus 7.5 acres, right? That's exactly how to say it in recursive land. Does that make sense? So you understanding what this number means in context actually helps you be recursive, helps you write the recursive function. 
You would also have to say um, on the very first year, year one, they had 120. So it was something like this. Year one, they had 120 acres, right? Okay. Okay. If you wanted to write this in function notation, can you guys try that for me really quick? I'll give you a start. It's f of n is equal to, how do you write previous? How do you write previous in function notation land? How do you write previous? Remember, I always point at the date and I say, okay, this is how you write previous. So in previous, the way you would write previous, I see some in the chat, it's f of n minus one. Very good. So if you want, yeah, very good. If you want to talk about the previous term, you would say this guy, but wherever you're at, it would just that be minus one. So very good. Very good. So then I would just copy the minus 7.5 here. Yes. Very good. Okay, now what I want you to work on. How would you write year one, they had 120 acres? How would you write year one, they would have 120 acres? In the chat, please. All right, so I asked you, how would you write year one, they had 120 acres? And someone in the chat put F of one equals 120. So in regular terms, this is how I would write it in English, but in math function notation, I would write it like this. Year one, they had 120 acres. Good. Okay, so you're gonna keep seeing this over and over again, over. Man, Ms. Johnson, we've seen explicit over and over again. Yes, and remember the very first time that you guys had to write a recursive, you were like, I don't like this, this is weird. Yes. Absolutely, it's gonna be weird. But again, it's it's gonna you're gonna get better at it. Okay, you just stick to this. Okay, moving right along. Um, where's my? Oh no, that's the wrong thing. Sorry. Here. Okay. So for those of you again, for those of you who don't have those two answers now, now you have those answers. I already have some people doing that. Right. Negative seven point five. Very good negative 7.5, they have more answers in here. If you're going to, um, yeah, you're so, okay. Um, uh, make sure you put your answers in here and then make sure they enter into your brain as well, okay? A little bit more. So, so um, we're continuing on this whole thing, right? It says, the sale of the land at the reserve was stopped when the reserve was 76.5 acres because biologists who studies prairie dogs found that the population was declining at the alarming rate of 20%. They determined that the decline was due to several factors, including the reduction of habit, habitat from selling off the reserve land. When the reserve began, the prairie dog population was about 600 individuals. Okay, so you have a couple questions here. Number one, sorry, number three, model the prairie dog population over time and years, starting with the beginning population and create both an explicit and, and a recursive equ equation. So this is the same thing, right? Except for now we're not looking at the land, we're looking at the um, prairie dogs themselves. And what type of a sequence is this justify your answer? Okay, so the very first thing, I know. Um, the very first thing that I want to do. Okay, anybody know what I want to do with this information that they gave me here? Anybody know what I would do? What would I do first? Or you? Yes, exactly. Okay, in the in the chat, put that in the chat. But I would exactly. I would create a table. Okay, for some reason, when I give you guys stuff in a table, everybody's like, oh, I got it. I know what to do, Ms. Johnson. And then you start doing this like business, right? Um, so if I don't give you a table, that should be the very first thing that you do, especially for those of you who like working with tables, right? For those of you who don't like working with tables and you can kind of just see this, don't draw a table, don't write a table. 
So I write a table because it organizes my information and I know what to do when my information is in a table. So I'm going to create a table. I'm going to do this guy because then it'll go faster in here. Do, do, do. I'll do a table. Oh, where did you go? My goodness. Why are you all the way down here? Who cares about you down here? Hold on. Let me bring it up here. It takes too long. I'm just going to cut it and then paste it all the way back up here. Where are you? Where was I? Here I am. Are you going to move here? Oh, no. Still not going to do it? Hold on a second. I don't know why, but it's my cursor is not showing up. This is this is um, what is the right word for this? This is anticlimactic. This is watching Miss Johnson move a chart up her one note. Okay, so um, I'm going to draw my N, my, uh, let's see, do they care about my variable here? No, I'm going to use, you know what, I'm going to use, um, prairie dog population, oh, 20, 20 per year. So I'm going to put Y, oh, that's going to confuse you. I'm going to use T for prairie dogs. And I'm going to use P of T because technically we've already used F of N, right? So once in a problem, you don't want to go back to the same variable. So I'm now I'm using T and P of T, where T is in years. Um, and P of T is the number of prairie dogs. So here it says, um, biologist, who study found that the population was declining at an alarming rate of 20% per year. The, they determined that the decline was due to several factors, including the reduction of habitat selling up. When the reserve began, the prairie dog population on the reserve was 600 individuals. So we're gonna go with year one, because we wanna use the same N, right? Because this is still years. Um, and actually I could use N if I wanted to, but Let's just continue. Um, and then, so we had 600 prairie dogs, right? Okay. So if I have 600 prairie dogs, oh man, they didn't give me any more information. What am I, I don't understand. What do I do now though? What do I do? Hmm. What information did they give me that I haven't used in my little table here? What information did they give me that I haven't used in my table yet? Yes, that 20% business. What does that 20% even mean? Oh man, this is kind of reminding me of our jumpstart problem, huh? Aren't you glad we did this jumpstart problem? Yeah, because <laughs> it's going to help you understand this part. Yeah, it's the percent at which it's declining. Very good. Um, and yeah, we don't need the 76.5 acres because they're just saying like at 76.5 acres, they had to stop doing it. We are going to kind of use it for up here, but yeah, let's just continue. So how do I, how do I get my two? Like, what do I, how many are going to be here? How, how many are going to be here in year two? Yeah, it is the 20% declining, but how do I calculate that? What do I put here? Ooh, someone put a number. Where'd you get that number from? Someone put 480. <gasps> Boom. Okay, a couple people put it. Okay. So someone said, hey, Miss Johnson, I'm going to take this and I'm going to multiply it by 0.8. Wait. And then someone else had put, hey, Miss Johnson, it's 480. Okay, so question, why are they multiplying by 0.8 if 0.2 is the declining rate? They're right, by the way. Uh, 
Okay, so the part that we were at is like, what? Where did um, uh, where did someone get this 0.8 business from? Like, why is it 0.8 when we clearly see it's 20 percent? And someone put in the chat, um, and I gotta clip this because it's such a good explanation. I won't put your name in there. I promise. Uh, where's my little? Uh oh, I don't know where my snip thing is. Hold on. Oh, there you are. It's right in front of my face. Um, so this person explains. Because like the last problem, the discount was 40%. Hold on a second, let me move this out of my way. So someone put it right here and I'll leave it right here for you guys. Um, someone said, because like the last problem, the discount was 40%, meaning there was 60% of the sale price. So we multiplied by 0.6 because the sale price was, um, because that was the sale price percentage. So I applied that same logic to this problem. Boss work right there. So of course here you realize, um, Oh, are you not going to give me a cursor again? Hold on a second. Sorry, sometimes this gets all like, here it goes. Um, so here, um, so of course here, I'm going to write 600 times my 0.8. So I remember how I got that, right? And then same thing goes here, right? I'm going to go three. And then clearly right here, because I'm multiplying by 0.8, right? Is this going to be an arithmetic? So I'm going to ask this question again. Ready? Because I multiplied by 0.8, is this going to be an arithmetic sequence? Yeah, the answer is no. Very, very good. So people are like, no, with geometric, Miss Johnson. Very, very good. So because this is 0.8, just like here was subtract, 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 told me arithmetic, because this is 0.8 point, like multiply by 0.8, multiply by 0.8, that automatically means that it's a geometric, geometric. So for that person who said, Ms. Johnson, I'm not very good at geometric, awesome, here's your chance, okay? So right now, what I'd like you to do is come up with a number that goes here and come up with the expression that goes here. Very very strong work, y'all. Very, very strong work. While you're doing that, I'm giving out points of participation. Very good. I got some more people participating. For those of you who are like, Miss Johnson, um, I don't want to put the wrong answer. I just gave someone who put the wrong answer a point. Now, don't give me like random, you know, don't be like, oh, Miss Johnson, look at me. Blue is the answer. No, you got to, you got to legit legit give me some work here okay so someone um i don't know what the answer is here but what i'm going to do is i know i'm just going to multiply that by 0.8 so instead of saying 480 times 0.8 i'm going to write 600 times 0.8 times point oops 0.8 okay and i'm going to scoochie my thing over so i have enough room so you should see this pattern growing here right and so then where's my actual thing. So I'm just going to take this and multiply this by 0.8. And I got 384 is my chart. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm pretty much done. <clears throat> I am not going to fill out more of that chart. I am going to pro probably put a T here to figure out my pattern. And if you're noticing my pattern here, can you guys all see how, <clears throat> what's, remember the two questions I keep asking you are, what stays the same, what changes? So here for this particular one, I need you to look here. What is staying the same and what is changing? So go ahead and figure that out while I switch this up so you guys can find this on here super quick. Boop. Very good. So what, what is staying the same? What is staying the same here? Yes, this 600 stays the same. So I'm gonna put a 600 here, good. The 600 stays the same, very, very strong. Very, very strong work there. Okay, now what is changing? What is changing? Yeah, that 0.8 is there, but the number of factors is changing. Okay, so I'm going to put 0.8 and then I'm going to put to the, now I want to figure out this thing here. So here I had one factor and I'm just going to put the number of factors of 0.8, one factor 
of 0.8. Here I had two factors of 0.8. Okay. And then I want you to figure out, okay, well, how is this related to this? How is this three related to this two, right? Is it the same number? Everyone's like, no, very good. I already see the answer in the chat as well. Very strong, very, very strong. So now I'm gonna try, I'm gonna attempt to write my equation. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to write my equation. My equation is gonna look something like this. And for those of you who are typing, remember that this little caret symbol, this is, that's the name of that symbol. That little caret symbol is, um, means to the, okay? So here's my explicit formula. Um, it's gonna be 600 times 0 0.8 to the T. Now, let's see, is that right? Do I want three factors of 0.8 here? Ah. Oh. No, I only want two. Darn. I want two of them. So what am I going to have to do with my T right there? What am I going to have to do with this three in order to get to that two? What am I going to have to do with this three to get to that two? So exactly, you're going to have to subtract one. Right? So I don't want that number of factors there. I don't want it to be to the third because that's not three factors, right? So I'm gonna subtract one off every single time. So if you didn't put minus one right here, make sure you put minus one because now it makes more sense, right? Yeah, I saw that earlier, thank you, right? Um, perfect. And if you used f of n here, I'm not gonna mark you off any points. I'm just reminding you that, hey, we already used f of n up here. So since the function is to, so this function is figuring out how big it is, the size of it, then this function is gonna say, tell me how many prairie dogs I have. So that's explicit. Let me write um, my, my um, recursive. Recursive is gonna look like this next equals um, previous times 0.2, right? Oh, 0 0.8, my bad, 0.8. I was thinking about something else, 0.8, right? And then if you wanted to use that, um, the, um, what is it called? Function notation, P of T, P of T minus one times 0.8, and then just get your first one in there. P of one equals 600, right? So here's your recursive, here's your explicit, right? We already decided that this guy's gonna be geometric. By the way, what told you this was geometric? What was the first sign here or here or wherever that told you, boom, it's geometric? Yes, very good. I hear multiplying. Um, multiplying would have gotten you there. Very good. Um, this 20% business, that's what told me. Very good, Nayeli, very good. So that this is what told me, this 20% definitely would have told me. Boom, Ms. Johnson. No, this is not gonna be like arithmetic. This is that, very, very good. Okay. Um, let me see, where am I right now? Let's see. Okay, so we did that. Um, okay, last question, and then we pause this video. How are decreasing arithmetic sequences different from decreasing geometric sequences? So if you notice here, both of these, um, let me try to squeeze it in there. Yeah, it doesn't. This and this are both, um, what are they called? Both of these are both um, decreasing. Look, the numbers are going down, 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 down. Same thing goes here, right? These numbers went down, right? So how are they the same? And then how are they different? That's the last question that we're gonna go over. So how are decreasing um, arithmetic sequences different than decreasing geometric sequences? How are, they, how are they the same? Actually, let's do that. How are they the same?
Yeah, exactly. Someone said, Ms. Johnson, they're both, the numbers are both going down. Exactly. Their numbers are getting smaller. Very good. That's another way to put it. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm going to snip this one. This is a really good response. Someone said here, this is how they're different, Ms. Johnson. This is how they're different. Here's how they're different. It's a very strong work here. So here's how they're different. And I'm gonna put this down here so everybody knows that this was a response for that. Decreasing arithmetic sequences are subtracted versus decreasing geometric sequences are divided. Now, some of you are like, but Ms. Johnson, it's multiplied. Uh, yeah, but when this number is smaller than one, you can technically call it division as well. But I understand what this person is saying, right? Decreasing is subtracted, decreasing is, divided, very good, which makes sense, right? Because if you look at our very first little reminder of geometric, this is multiplication and this is addition. And so I said, hey, how do you know that this was a geometric? Someone's like multiplying, 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 exactly, right? So I should be able to place something in front of you like this, and you should be able to tell me if this is geometric, increasing or decreasing. Right. So for me, I will just tell you right now here. Here are the red flags that are telling me this is decreasing. This number here. My my multiplying factor, right? This multiplying factor is smaller than one. Right. It's smaller than one. Um, and in actuality, I'll even say it a different way. Um, it's between negative one and, and one. Right, this multiplier is between negative one and one. Okay, Ms. Johnson, how did you know this one was going to be decreasing? Well, number one, they said that it had been um, very, and then they were reduced over time. But if I look at this function here, do you remember our slope when it has a um, a negative slope? It decreases. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a that's a key. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so someone put this out there, which is really strong work as well. Someone said, hey, Ms. Johnson, isn't um, division repeated subtraction? So isn't it the same? Kind of, kind of. I will say it's the same kind of. So, um, and I'll put this one over here. Um, the reason why I say it's kind of the same is because um, someone said, I'm so sorry, but isn't division repeated subtraction? So isn't it all the same? And the answer is yes, except for from term to term, we just did it once. And from term to term, we just did it once. So in between here, there's a bunch of repeated subtraction in order for you to get to 480. So yes, kind of. Good points. All right. Um, super impressed with how well you all participated.